if dreams are like movies, then memories are films about ghosts. And uh, I just that that always resonated with me as I've gotten as even more as I get older. And I try to go back and cling to these things that were like I thought would be evergreen uh, in my brain. And now they're getting ever gray. everybody and welcome to another episode of the audio fails eh? my name's john his name's andy now then all lovers make make the same mistakes yes they do yes all lovers make make the same mistakes as me and you we're all that later <laughs> or maybe not um but first we have a song <laughs> To listen to which andy is going to serve up on a padded purple velvet cushion andy what have you got not my cushion do, i'll tell you that much i actually do one thing, <laughs> one thing. <laughs> what have you got for us andy so uh we recently had a viewer request uh for a song by monsters and men and I had said that I had a couple of their tracks sort of, uh, you know, banging around in here to give you at some point down the line. And I figured what better time than now, since they've already been introduced to the band or to we the did one, didn't we? Already, didn't we? Yeah, we did. That, that's the recommendation that we did. It was Wolves Without Teeth, uh, oh, which was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was one of yours. No, so. no, no, no. That was a viewer. I remember the, I remember the yeah, I remember the uh, I remember the band and the song. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I think I said during the discussion they're in that. I had wanted to bring these guys to the channel and a viewer had beaten me to it. So I'm just going to piggyback off their recommendation. Um, and I'm going to give you um, perhaps their, I think their most popular track uh, just as a way to kind of like, you know, introduce you to something uh, else by them. That is pretty acclaimed. I would imagine um, all over the world actually. Uh, and the song is called little talks. And this is a KEXP performance, so enjoy the oh. aesthetic there and the uh, incredible sound quality. Um, and come back and and let me know what you think. I, this is also, the last one was just a an, an audio uh, recording of the track. It's not like we got introduced to the band, so you kind of get to see their makeup and, you know, like how they've, they're they composed and, and everything like that. So um, go off and check it out and let me know what you think. Well done. Cool. Uh, so our uh, next song uh, was our first single from our album and it's called Little Talks. Stars creep as you sleep, it's keeping me awake It's the house telling you to close your eyes And some days I can't even trust myself It's killing me to see you this way Cause though the truth may bury this shit will carry on Yeah, nice start. Um, yes, I'm reminded now that in ways they kind of remind me of uh, the XX. I still prefer her voice to his voice. Nothing wrong with his voice, but I really like her voice. Um, it's nice to see all the gang together and the exuberant, hey, to start it. It was a very nice touch. The trumpet sounds fantastic straight away. Um, it sounds like there's a dialogue going between the two of them. Uh, 
something about the house is really empty and he said it's killing me to see you this way something like that so i don't know exactly what's going on but it sounds interesting let's just they're about to launch into another little bit um okay let's bring it back just a touch so the truth may bury this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. And full of love. Saturdays, I don't know if I am wrong or right. Your mind is playing tricks on you, my dear. Cause though the truth may bury this, shit will carry on. So it's almost surreal because it doesn't really look like that sound is coming out of her and in that room there. It's oh, really, really lovely. Um, yeah. You know, from my love of Dexies, etc., I'd love a brass solo. God damn it. It's really interesting. When they, they bring it down for the verses and they're singing it's back and forth as a dialogue, Picked up some other bits there. I prefer her voice, but actually his voice is clearer in terms of hearing what he has to say. Um, but I still like her voice more. I can listen to her all day quite easily. I know that's really unfair because I remember that it says that it's in Reykjavik and I remember Andy saying that these were from Iceland. So any comparisons to Björk would be totally unfair, so I won't mention it at all, but it's there. Um, almost visually as well. Cool, right, let's listen to this bit again because that was awesome. You disappear All this life is a ghost of you Now we're torn, torn, torn apart There's nothing we can do Just let me go and meet again soon Now wait, wait, wait for me Though the truth may bury this 
Ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Yeah, that was really enjoyable. And um, the overall sound was really bouncy and indie folky and happy. Uh, there's some lines in there um, which made me think uh, the ghost of you and all the screams sound the same. Um, and the way they were dialoguing. Yeah, really interesting. Um, Star of the show is that last of the trumpet, big time. Really, really lovely sound. And it elevated the whole song whenever she played. Yeah, this is good stuff. Good stuff. It's it just made me smile. Um, it's not a song that will change your life or anything, but it is just a real, yeah, joy-inducing song. I don't think the lyrics were particularly joy-inducing. <laughs> well, let's find out more by going back to Ambi. All right. Welcome back. Um, what do you make? of this track, this performance, the band? Yeah, first thing I have to say is, I love the way she said, little tox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that probably won me over, just that. <laughs> <laughs> so immediately there's a really nice atmosphere. I think the link said it was a hostel in Reykjavik. Um, and somehow the bookshelves behind add something to it. Um, I imagine that the storm has closed in, cutting them off from the outside world. And seeing as they're probably staying the night anyway, the band might as well play a few tunes, add that sort of feel <laughs> to it, which is great. Really liked it. Um, so with a few exuberant haze, we're in. Um, <laughs> and it was actually really good to see the whole band because from memory, the last listen, the personality of that song to me came from the two vocals yeah and i remember at the time saying this kind of reminded me a bit of the xx you know and there's still a little bit of that vibe and some points it was you know my attention was just on those two um and honestly the uh you know um the female singer in particular has a lot of charisma um and she almost stole the show almost stole the show but not quite um I still prefer her vocals to his. His aren't bad at all. There is an oddness to his vocals. Like, he's learned from listening to somebody else how to sound singing. Do you know what I mean? There's there's like a, there's a maturity and a roundness to his voice which belies the persona that is projecting it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't quite... And it's interesting, you know, but she does, her voice itself has a lot of character, which I really like. Um However, conversely, as the song progresses, I find that I can actually make out his parts much easier and understand him. But it doesn't stop me favouring her voice anyway, despite that. I don't care. Um, she makes me think, in my mind, of a student union version of a young Björk. Yes, all, yes. That's all an way of putting it. Oh, my God. The best manic. Um, yes. But, as we all know, comparisons are lazy and unfair. So in the words of Basil Fawlty, don't mention the Björk. I mentioned it once, but I think I got away with it. So there's a really nice, full, bouncy quality to the music, this indie folk, which really feels up-tempo, and it just, up-tempo, so it just makes me smile. None of the musicians really stand out, bar one, but that gives it a whole togetherness to the sound and to, to the band as well, which again, this unity is really nice. It feels like they're all in it. Um, as they progress, they drop down in terms of musically for the verses. So it's just a B, gently strumming guitars and the odd waft from an accordion. Um, and the singers trade lines. So it feels very much one A, B, A, B. So it feels like a dialogue. Yep. So I sense there's a narrative threat and I do try and pick out some lines and they're the ones I got, which isn't many. She starts off talking about walking around this old and empty house and then blah, blah, blah. And then he says, it's killing me to see you this way. And then they go into a bit and there's a line which is repeated quite often, something about ships will carry our bodies somewhere. Um, 
And then a bit later on, she said, like, there's an old voice in my head. And then he says, your mind's playing tricks on you, my dear. And they sing another line. I think it's repeated a couple of times. The screams all sound the same. I thought it was a really interesting line. And then she says something about gone, gone away. I'll watch you disappear. And then there was all that's left is a ghost of you. And we'll meet again soon. They're the bits I got. So I think... And this is as much as I've got of the song. I think it sounds like a loving relationship that is no longer. I don't know if the ghost bit is metaphorical, if it's real. I've got in my mind, was there imagery of ships or sea in the last song as well? I can't quite I believe remember. So. Just, yeah. Yeah. So without taking in much of the words, <laughs> the intonation, the way they sang it, gave some indication of thoughtfulness, but also celebration. Um, they're the two things I got out of it. So where it might have been, some of the words there made you think of it slightly down and dark, but actually musically and the way they sang it, it sounded more of a celebration of a relationship um, with some thoughtfulness about what it meant or whatever put into it as well. So that's kind of what I got out of it without taking in the words. So they go back to the song. So they break it down and they build it back up. It's a really nice work from the electric guitar as it goes up. And that's about as much as you get of him standing out, you know, because it's a real ensemble piece. And there's a couple more rousing choruses and attendant haze. And then the slow strumming bit ends. Now to the, the brass elephant in the room. Um, the whole song is elevated every time the trumpet speaks. Yeah. From the first blast at the very start, I loved it. And it made the difference to what otherwise would be a sort of standardish song. Mm -hmm. It just brought it up like several levels. I had to pull back the solo part. And honestly, I don't want to sound like a dick here, but it was hard to believe that that sound was coming from that trumpet player in that setting as well. It was just <laughs> all really unexpected. And I don't want to say, uh, you know, obviously anyone can play the trumpet, but it's usually a sweaty middle-aged bloke with saggy cheeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> and this this, this angelic form was just blasting this out and it's um, all the more delightful. And I do not know how technical the playing was, but I will have a hunch that Mr. Kevin Rowland would have been very happy to have her in his entourage. <laughs> um, I absolutely love the trumpet player. Um, yeah. And I, so I'd say well, overall, um, I was blown away by her. I was to a certain extent completely charmed and blown away by the female singer as well. I think musically this song was a great big smile and kind of joy inducing to me, like, a, I don't know, like a lovely toasted crumpet on a rainy day. It was just real nice sort of humanity to it. And I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great song. It's hella catchy. Um, yeah. They both have, I, I admire both of their voices a lot. I am kind of smitten with her as the singer. Uh, I think she's got a lot of charm to her for some reason. Your, your comparison, I won't bring up the name, but, dead on uh with that and yeah the brass more just approachable takes... than, than the not for yes, yes yes she yeah. who, who shall not be named she yes. was, when she was her age she was a scary she's a scary individual now but she was very feral then. yes 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 <laughs> yeah, feral feral. Feral. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and then, and then like you said the brass elevates this already really sweet song to another level and gives it like this whole other jolt of life and energy uh, and even just a stronger foundation to stand on as a song. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a great tune. Um, it's no wonder to me that this has universal appeal and it's one of those tunes that despite it having universal appeal, it does, it isn't for certain snobs in our community, you know what I mean? Of, of like avid music listeners, there can sometimes be something too saccharine about those kind of songs or, or just too pastiche or plastic. And this it doesn't have any of that. And yet it still was able to break those barriers and becomes mega popular. And um, I respect the shit out of that because they didn't have to sell themselves uh, short or, you know, pander to anybody in order to make a really good song. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. So I'm glad you did too. Um, as we oh, mentioned, sorry, I think, sorry, Andy, I've just got to say as well two things. One, live performance, it was excellent. You keep, I keep forgetting that. 
<laughs> yeah, that's so good. Oh, live performance, excellent. And two, they're Icelandic and they're singing in English. Yeah, and that's, you know, you know. Yeah, and you can hear everything. Yeah, I'd love to see us try and sing in Icelandic. I don't even want to bring up their names again because of the, the how much fumbling and bullshittery I'm going to go through trying to do that. In fact, I'm going to say this. Guys, we've done a video on these guys before. If you want to know the members <laughs> of the band and who they are, you can go back to that and hear me fumble through those names. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> I remember there's, there's several sort of uh, Goodmansons and Gottes daughters. Yeah, <laughs> so-and-so's dot here and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And out of respect for their culture and their names, I'm just going to send them back to my last poor attempt. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description below, and we'll probably set up some playlists in the near future with these guys on there. Um, I'll probably bring some more to the table at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, this is the debut single from their debut album, My Head is an Animal. Uh, though it is the first featured, uh, though it was first featured on the Into the Woods EP, which uh, predated uh, the aforementioned album. In fact, it came out in December of December 20th, 2011. The full album came out April 3rd of 2012. Um, and in order to build steam ahead of the song's official release, Philadelphia's Radio 104.5 began playing Little Talks in August of 2011. Um, and it propelled the band to nationwide popularity in the United States. Uh, and it had sold over 2 million copies uh, in the U.S. by March of 2013. So a year and a half or so, two years. Um, and we're already in the millions of, of, of sales. Pretty damn good. Um, and that's just the U.S. Little Talks reached number 12 uh, in the U.K. charts and re-entered the U.K. charts top 40 uh, later in 2013, in Ireland, the song debuted at number 28 on July 26, 2012, and it released. Uh, it reached the number one spot on August 16th, spending two weeks in the top position. Uh, the song has peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, becoming their first top 20 single in the United States. The song holds the record for the longest climb to reach a top 40 on the chart within 30 weeks. Little Talks is also the highest charting single to date that chart uh, to chart by an Icelandic artist. On July 21st, 2012, it topped the alternative songs list and remained for a second week and ultimately ranked as the third most successful song uh, at the year's end. It was certified platinum in the U.S., becoming their first song to do so, and the song was listed for 48 weeks. In Australia, they were the uh, where the song reached number seven. The song also reached number two on Triple J's Hot 100 uh, in 2012. Elsewhere, it reached top ten in New Zealand and several European countries, including Austria, Flemish Belgium, Germany, and Italy. So, kind of took off everywhere. Um, and USA Today described the song as a monster hit. Noted, noting its galloping chorus and reverb heavy production and PBS arts described the songs rolling infectious energy and foreboding lyrics and those lyrics I am now going to jump into. And this song starts with that refrain of, Hey, Hey, Hey. Uh, and we get the verse proper uh, starting. I don't like walking around this old and empty house. So hold my hand. I'll walk with you, my dear. The stairs creak as you sleep. It's keeping me awake. It's the house telling you to close your eyes. And some days I can't dress myself. It's killing me to see you this way. Because though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Hey, hey, hey. There's an old voice in my head that's holding me back. Well, tell her that I miss our little talks. Soon it will be over and buried with our past. We used to play outside when we were young and full of life and full of love. Some days, I don't know if I am wrong or right. Your mind is playing tricks on you, my dear. Because though the truth may vary, this ship will carry your bodies safe to shore. Hey, don't listen to a word I say. Hey, the screams all sound the same. Hey. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Two more haze. You're gone, gone, gone away. I watched you disappear. All that's left is a ghost of you. 
Now we're torn, torn, torn apart. There's nothing we can do. Now let me go. We'll meet again soon. Now wait, wait, wait for me. Please hang around. I'll see you when I fall asleep. Hey, don't listen to a word I say. The screams all sound the same. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Don't listen to a word I say. Hey, the screams all sound the same. Hey, though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. And I um, found this little write up here. Uh, basically, this is coming from none of the female vocalists. Uh, it's about a couple and a husband. Uh, it's about a couple and the husband passed away. And it's from the con and it's from the conversation between the two of them. We don't know if they're if she's going crazy or if someone's actually there. Someone being like the ghost or his apparition or whatever. Uh, we've kind of been inspired by people that lived in my house. This old couple that lived there for thirty years. So they kind of. Um, I guess we're inspired by the, t the the love tale of these two individuals who occupied her home before her for such a long period of time. And I guess she kind of romanticized this kind of sad, sweet fiction and dialogue between the two in her later stages of life and after he had already passed. And it's sweet and sad and I don't know, I like it. And I think you either have, you know, maybe parents or grandparents or you know of a couple that were like this or... Maybe you see yourself growing old with your better half and and um, as sad as it is, you kind of like want to have this, like you want to know that there's still a connection after you're gone with the person that meant the most to you. I don't know. To me, that's how it hits with me, but I'm a big dumb sap. So, uh, but I do really, really enjoy this song. Yeah, you're like, you totally agree. That checks out. Um, and I thought, I thought you might like it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. Yeah. I mean, um, in terms of the word ghost, um, there is no such thing as ghosts. However, there is the concept of ghost in terms of memory. Well, how people live on is is in memories of others. Now that mm. sometimes that memory is formalized into things like statues or you know gravestones or you know captured on videotape or audio tape or on YouTube or whatever. Um, but that's how the ghost of someone lives on and. Um, People I've known that have passed, they they uh, they remain in my memory. Yeah. And as time goes on, those memories, some of them, are not quite so readily available, and they become ghost-like, I guess. Yeah. In terms of recall or in terms of detail, um, and that, but that's that's the sort of ghost quality. Um, yeah. That I believe in. Um, these stupid Britain's most haunted house bullshit. You know, come on. This is pandering <laughs> to stupid, stupid people and manipulative people as well. They make money out of it. But yeah. no, this is a nice concept, and I could see that dialogue going along in her head quite easily. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't doesn't mean she's mad at all, you know, because you will have that. Oh, you have those conversations with people that are no longer with you all the time. Yeah, and part of it is you're talking to yourself too. You're just yeah. um, projecting uh, somebody or something else to absorb the emotional unloading that you're probably doing when that's going yes. on. Um, yeah. And what you just said about um, like ghosts and, and memories, it reminds me of a lyric from a, a, a Counting Crow song where Adam Durst says, um, if, uh, if dreams are like movies, then memories are films about ghosts. And uh, I just, that, that always resonated with me as I've gotten as, even more as I get older and I try to go back and cling to these things that were like I thought would be evergreen uh, in my brain. And now they're getting ever gray. And it's uh, it's tough to go back to them sometimes and find them. And you really got to think to do it. But uh, but it's sad and it's bittersweet. And uh, it's it's all those things. It's just part of life. So, yeah. Have you, um, have you ever had a memory come to you which you hadn't thought about for, for years? And suddenly this memory comes to you that you haven't thought about and, it, and as it comes to you it's really fresh and like oh my god i've forgotten about that yeah and, and in those happened. moments i wonder I know, what lovely, other i i, I, I wonder what that. previous yeah. memory that was clear just lost its life for this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, the that's the way they look at it <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> there's only so much room up here john i know 
<laughs> I did too much recreational fun when I was younger. I can't hold all these things. I'm well aware <laughs> of my limitations. So, <laughs> But yeah, man, thanks so much for giving this one a listen. Guys out there in the listening audience, let us know what you think of Monsters and Men, this particular track, if there's other stuff that we should listen to. I've got a couple in mind, uh, but we're always open to soliciting uh suggestions from you guys out there in the listening audience it means a lot to us to see you guys interact with each other and us as well really do appreciate that if you're new here think about liking sharing and subscribing trying to grow the channel um john and i've been trying to manifest it through meditation shit's just not working out so uh we've come to the realization that we're going to need you guys to help us with that goal I, so, please. Simple finger, finger yeah. Simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh but all that out of the way Hopefully, John and I will see all y'all uh, in growing numbers on the next installment of the audio files. See you later, guys. Hare Krishna. Harry who? <laughs> I've just been watching.